so the first use of symbols then initiated this evolution of brain structures, right? Um, and so again, symbolic language begins the process of the expansion of the human prefrontal cortex as a, an adaptation so that animals can use um, symbolic processing better. And what he talks about here then is really he's trying to imagine how it is this first ape-like creature could have invented a symbolic system. And what he's going to talk about is um, the, the sort of the, the general evolution of hominids toward humans, right? Um, and the, and which, which creatures might have done this, right? And so um, this is a sort of general timeline of, uh, of hominid evolution. This is very schematic, right? But you see this, the Australopithecines, um, they existed for quite a long time. They're, they're presumed to be kind of, uh, you know, human ancestors. And th th they existed, though, in this period of time that overlaps with the period of the first sort of more human types of creatures, Homo habilis and Homo erectus. Um, and they also existed in this period of time in which Homo habilis, I mean, it's, it's clear that Homo habilis was using these stone tools. What's not clear is whether, and, and so the, one, of the, w one, of the th one of the hypotheses is that Homo habilis developed this tool making ability uh, through the sort of biological evolution. And what Deacon is going to argue is that no, in fact, it was the Australopithecines that were not not so human as the Homo habilis, they're the ones that had actually had the first ideas and it says to use symbolic processing and that symbolic processing use was the one that led them to further symbolic processing that led them to be able to use tools. So, um, but let's, let, we'll, we'll, um, so the, the way in which he's going to argue this is that um, he's going to say that stone tools are a cultural trait rather than a biological trait. Right? And so it's something that can be inherited culturally rather than genetically. Right? And he's going to indicate that these Australopithecines, uh, Australopithecines, if they were the ones that invented symbolic processing, could then have also invented the first tools. Right? And you know, there's, you know, there's evidence that these first stone tools actually predated Homo habilis. So you know, he's, you know, he's arguing on, as, as far as anthropologically, archaeologically, there's, there's some support for what he's saying, right? Um, but, but what he's, you know, I think more importantly for his argument, what, what it indicates is that symbol use creates an alternative form of natural selection that's based on a kind of cultural tradition that exists alongside of natural selection based on uh, biological uh, genetic data, right? Um, and so, and what he's going to claim then is that he's going to kind of redefine what it means to be human by saying that humanness can be defined as participation in a tradition of symbolic production and transmission. So um, what he's going to say is that language and symbolic processing in general has created this sort of unbroken tradition that's passed from generation to generation, not biologically but culturally, and this type of transmission occurs or, or, or <coughs> creates a kind of evolution that goes much more quickly than biological evolution, and that this type of evolution will in turn create natural selection pressure for biological changes that will support the changes that are being made in symbolic processing, right? Um, and so here, again, is, is he, he's actually expanding the argument for the way in which ideas influence genetic, genetic evolution by saying that, that in fact, we, that humans have develop, developed this entire alternate form of evolution through language um, that's just as powerful, in fact, more powerful than biological evolution. 